Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. My name is Mary Howard, and I want to welcome you to the Navigating Web BGAS webinar for the PAMI SPOs. I will be conducting the webinar today along with Charlene Carr and Crystal Pender, who are uh, both uh, project officers also on this item. So let's go ahead and get started. The webinar is being recorded and we will more than likely get it posted to your YouTube site. I wanna let you all know that you are muted, but we will be taking breaks throughout the webinar so you can ask questions. And since we're such a small team, what we will do is we'll unmute you, unmute you during the uh, question break so you can ask your questions. Now, the other thing I did want to let you know that the site we're going to be using today is what we call our UAT site. That's where we go in and do any testing. So any of the information you see will be fake. You're not looking at actual data. So I just did want to give you a heads up on that also. All right, now having said that, let's go ahead and get started. So, like I said, this is the UAT site. When you log in, you're going to be going to bgas.samsa.gov, and that is the actual site. That's the live site. You just want to take a quick look at the screen before we go any further. As you can see here, we have links. So if you've forgotten your password, you can click on here, and another screen will open that will walk you through the process of uh, updating your password, the same for your username. And then if you need assist, if you need a new user account, what you do. And here is a document that will walk you through the process. That will walk you through the process of activating an account. Now, the reason I wanted to point this out is when a, a state or a jurisdiction will call the help desk and say they new account, they need a new account, we will always send them to their project officer. So a new state user must go through the project officer to have their account set up. Our help desk needs your approval to set up the account. So that's why that is there. We also have here, if you need assistance, you can email the help desk or you can give them a call at 1-888-8301-BGAS. That's 2427. So all that information is right here. You'll note down here in the lower left-hand part of the screen, we also have... Mary, you're not sharing your screen. I'm sorry. I'm not? No. Hold on. I apologize. Can you see it now? Yes, we can. I do apologize. So sorry. Thank you, Crystal. All right. So here's this is what I was talking about. Forget password. Forget username. Need new account. I'll go over that one more time real quick. Is a document. This is a document I was talking about. Now, the other items we have here is like I said, we have the SPO list. If you open this, it's an Excel spreadsheet that gives the SPO and which state or jurisdiction they're assigned to and the state contact list. And the reason I want to point, I'm going to show why these are important uh, in just a moment. So to log in,
when you initially log in, the first thing you'll see is the window shade. And that just gives you any updated information. For instance, when a uh, application is going to be opening, that information will be here. We also have what our monthly system updates are, our maintenance. And also we have just here information about web browser uh, functionality, which are the best browsers to use for using WebB gas. Once you've updated this information, you click and it'll automatically close. And for you all, when you log in, this is the window you'll see. This is the dashboard, and it'll have your assigned states and jurisdictions included in your dashboard. So, I just want to run over this real briefly. We're going to be using, you'll see here, available block grants. We're going to be using the 2021 block grant. So I simply click and come down and click on go. And all of the block grants, all the years for the PAMI block grant will be included. So you can always use this to go back and forward to whichever window shades you need. All right, so now we have the 2021 PAMI application slash report. The here are just basically summary counts of who have submitted how many revisions they have, which ones have been ref and which ones have been approved. So this is just a quick look at how that works. You'll come down here, like I said, I just threw a bunch of states together. Yours will be your assigned states. Before we begin with this portion, I do want to show you a couple things up here. If you go to support, And you'll come down here and you'll see training. This is where all of the tutorials and navigation manuals are located. So if you wish, you can come here and for the SAMHSA, you can download your navigation manual and save it to your desktop. And then if you ever have any questions on how you're supposed to do something, uh, you can always refer to the manual. So these are all here. And if you ever need to, you can always refer your users because their manuals are here also. So you can always refer your users to their manuals to help out. The other thing I did want to point out, now I know for some of the departments within SAMHSA, they have one person who assigns this information. But I just want to point out this is where the states go in and update their information. But we also have for the SAMHSA contacts. Now, like I said, I know for some of the departments, they have a person that goes in and assigns the SPOs to their states. But if you would, it would be a really good idea to go in and just double check and make sure that you are the correct SPO for this state because this data gets pulled for other parts of the uh, application. So just make sure before you get started that you go through and make sure you are the person who is signed. If your name isn't here, you just simply click on new and select your name. That's all there is to it. But that just really helps out and really cuts down on the confusion later on. The other thing I did want to point out is we have several reports that have been built based on the PAMI report. And he, these are here for your use. Now it is broken down. You'll see here, you'll note that we have 2017 to 2019, and then the same tables basically for 2020, because we went in and uh, did a lot of modifications in 2020 and changed the tables. So we had to build new reports but these are here for your use. Now, going back to the dashboard. All right. So, 
You'll see here we have the plan and we have the report. You just simply click on those buttons and they'll let you know. They'll take you right to the application itself. And we'll come back to this in a moment. You can also You'll see here that each of the states and jurisdictions are a link. So if you click on the link, if you click on the state, it will also take you to all of their applications, as you can see here. So you can click on this and it'll open that specific application, but it also gives you the status for each of the applications and that information. And if you need to, if you ever need to, you can click on the print button and that will print out, that will give you a, I'm sorry, that will give you a hard copy of the entire application. So instead of having to go through the application and print each table, you can come here and you can print the entire application. The other thing I want to point out is you'll see here it says number of revisions and it'll have it'll tell you the total revisions that are in place at this point active revisions that are in place at this time if you click on the number it will open a second screen and you can see the status of those revision requests from here As you can see here, it says sent to, these have all been sent to the state, but they haven't yet been opened and started. So that's what those numbers are for. And as the revisions are completed, the numbers will decrease. And then finally, you'll see over here, I have down here for Wyoming, that they have been signed off. So as, and we're gonna go through this in just a second, as you go through and do your checklist, once you sign off on the checklist, your name, the date, and time stamp will appear. So you can quickly see the progress of the checklist as it goes through the process. Okay, now. I'm going to unmute everyone. Are there any questions? We don't have any inside of the uh, question chat, Mary. Okay, thank you. We'll move on. Really? I, uh, Go ahead, Michelle. We did have more people. Oh, okay. There's the answer. I didn't see it. I was going to say I didn't see where anyone answered my question, but it's there. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I was trying to tell. I was trying to tell you I couldn't see your screen, but then oh. <laughs> Crystal said that <laughs> we're good. Thank you for your support. I appreciate. It. Okay, yep. we'll go ahead and move on. All right. Let's go to the checklist itself, and I'm going to use the report checklist. Now, one thing to note that the, the checklists themselves are all set up the exact same way. So whether you're doing the application checklist or the report checklist, the process, the navigation process is the same thing. I also wanted to point out, I'm going to show you one way to navigate. That doesn't mean this is the only way. Once you get into the system and start uh, using it, you'll become comfortable with your own way of navigating. So I'm not here to tell you this is the way you should do it. You'll come up with a way that makes you comfortable and that's the system you should use. Okay, so now the state has gone in, they've completed the application and they've submitted it to SAMHSA. When it's submitted, you'll get an email informing you of that. So then you can go in and start the checklist review process. And this is what the checklist looks like. This is what will show up on your screen once the state has submitted their application. 
So you simply click on the PAMI POTL link and it will open the checklist. If you look along the left hand menu, you will see that we've divided the application into sections. So when you come to the checklist, those sections appear here at the top. So section A is the program information. And you have yes, no, and NA, non-applicable uh, responses here along the left-hand side. You will note, I want to point this out, you will note down here for the last two, you have a check mark. That means that, you're, that you are required to have either a yes or an NA. No, I'm sorry, for you, it's just a yes. You must have a yes for the check marked items for you to be able to complete the checklist. These are required. These must have a response before the checklist is, can be completed. And you'll notice this as we go through the different sections. You'll see these check marks that we they must have an at yes. So as you go through and you're marking the marking your reviewing your checklist, you'll come to the question and you'll notice that there is a view hyperlink, which means you can review that table. So by simply clicking on the view. It opens that table up for you. So you can go in and you can review the table and make sure everything has been included, everything is correct. And Mary, Lisa just wants to point out um, that this is the program performance report and not the application. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, this is the report. This is the report. But the when you look at the app, when you bring up the application, once the state has submitted the application. The checklist process is exactly the same. The questions will be different, but navigating through the checklist is exactly the same. All right, so you can so you can have your table open and you can be asking, you can be responding to your questions and reviewing the table at the same time. So you can go back and forth. Now, one thing I want to remind you is please remember that once you're done that you simply close this table and it brings you right back to the report. Because what we do have happen occasionally is uh, someone will come in, they'll click view on this one and they'll load this table. And then instead of closing it, they'll come back down and they'll do the SAMHSA review and they'll open up another and you'll have like five or six table, you know, and then they'll go back and do it again and again and you'll have five or six tables open up here. So make sure that once you're done with that table that you close it and then it'll bring you right back to the checklist itself. It'll bring you right back to the checklist itself. So as I said, you simply go through each section. Now, once you've gone through the section and have completed it, for each section, you must, once you've completed it, you must click on the save. You must click on the save for each section once you've completed it. And then you can move on to the next. If you don't, you'll lose whatever data you just did. You'll have to go back and do it again. So I just wanted to point that out. Make sure you go through and as you do the sections that you click on the save button. Now. You've gone through and you've completed all your sections. You've done your review. And I'm going to down here, you'll note that this one is blank and it is required. So I'm going to click on yes. And I'm going to click on the save button. And the what will happen is, and I'm going to go through and check and see, I have a required field that isn't completed because once you've completed all the required fields or the checklist itself, the PO will become active. So I have missed a required field. I have missed a required field. So we have these required fields are completed. 
these required fields are completed. And you'll see here I have a no instead of a yes. So come back, click on save. And once I clicked on save, now all the required fields have been completed, my PO button becomes active. My PO button becomes active. So you are required to enter a comment. And then you go in and you enter your initials. And then you click on the PO approve button. So now, when I come here, I'm going to come back out. You will see here, I have signed off on the checklist. I have done my part of the checklist. So then, your first level checklist reviewer will get an email saying it's ready for them to review. They, go, they will go in. and they will do their part of the review. And once they've done their review, they can then sign off on it. And that's how the process is. So once you've all checked off on the checklist, once the assignment is complete and everyone is signed off on the checklist, this is what the dashboard will look like. It will let everyone know that the checklist for this state has been completed for the report. Any questions? No questions, Mary. Okay, thank you. All right, so as part of the review process for the, once the state has submitted them, as part of the process, we had been using, we've been going through and using the checklist. Now, if you go in and you're doing your checklist, I'm going, I've already signed off, and I just want to say you go through and you're doing your checklist, and I click on the review button, and I come up and I see that some information has not been completed. You can, from this table, as you're doing your review, you can do what are called the revision requests. Now, you have some options with this. You'll note, you'll say that some information is missing. You can do your re revision request right from the table itself as you're doing part of your review. You simply click there. I'm going to put in a description. I'm going to click on save. And now, right from the table itself, you can send it to the state or you can edit or delete it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send this to the state. An email has been sent to the state user informing them that there is some information on the general information page that needs to be updated that is not complete. And that's going to be based on your description. So this is one way you can do your revision request. This is an option for you. Just remember that you then close out that table and then go back. But you can do this for each of the sections as you go through. So you can send out your revision request at the time you're doing your uh, review. Your other option, whichever you're comfortable with, is you can come down to the revision request screen. And you can do your revision request from here. You've done your review or you're in the process of doing your review. You can close out the review and come here. You can expand all the forms and you can also print all of your revisions. We also have the option of you can filter your revisions. 
you can filter them without revisions, with revisions, created, the ones that have been sent to the state but have not been opened yet, the ones the state has opened and they're working on, those that have been completed, those that are approved or disapproved. So you can filter in all of those different ways. I find the best way is just to use forms with revisions. If you do that, it will open up every form that has a revision, no matter what the status is, no matter what the status is, just any form with a revision. And you, always, you can always use the status to see where a revision is in its process. So you'll see the one, this one has been approved. This one has been sent to the state, yet it's not yet open. This one was completed, which means the state has completed it and they have sent it back to you for review. And we're gonna go over this in just a second. Okay, once again, it's, it's been sent to the state. Now this one you'll see, sent to state post disapproval. In other words, the state completed it, sent it back to you, you did your review and you found an issue. So you disapproved it. The re and in here is the reason for the disapproval. Okay, so it's now gone back to the state and they have to update or whatever your description is and the reason for disapproval and fix that and then they'll send it back to you. So here's just a quick way you can review all of the revisions for that state and where they are in the process. So now they completed, we'll say they completed the board council staff demographics. They sent it back to you. You've gone in, you've done, and you can view the form once again from here. So if I click on view the form, The form appears. You can look and see if they actually updated the information or if something is still missing. And then another option, you can do approval and disapproval from the form, or you can go back to the revision request screen and do it. So I'm going to click on they missed something. So I'm going to click on I'm going to disapprove this. When I do so, a text box appears. And you're going to put in the reason for disapproval. OK. And when you click on OK, it says here in this yellow box, processing the reason for disapproval. And you will see here that the status has changed post disapproval and the reason why. So another email has gone out to the state. They're going to open it and they're going to update or make the, any corrections they need to make. And this is how, this is the part of the revision request process. So like I said, you can do it directly from your, as you're doing your review, the review process, the checklist, or you can do it from here. And remember, as the status changes here, as the status changes here, when you go back to the application dashboard, the revision requests on the application dashboard, that number changes. So we went from four to five here. So this is just a quick, easy review so you can see the status of your revision requests. The one other thing I did want to show you before we move on is if you, you want to, you can also come in to a section you can also come in to a section and you can print the individual. You can print the individual tables and make them a hard copy if you need to. So for each section, the table itself, you can print. Or if you need to, you can actually go into the document itself and print. 
And when we say instructions, if I click on instructions, just as an FYI for you, the instructions on how to complete, co complete each table are listed here. So when the state users are going in, if they have any questions, they can come in here. And this gives them instructions on how to complete each table. Each table has their own instructions. One other thing I did want to point out was if you go, I'm going back to the dashboard again. Let's say I'm going to go to Guam. If I come to Guam and I click on the 2022 application, this is what the dashboard looks like for the state user. This is what they come to. And you'll notice down here we have related documents. We have the FOA, the application instructions. So all of the application instructions are in one place. So once again, if the state wishes to, they can download it as a PDF and they'll have the individual instructions for each table on their desktop if they want it that way. And then we also have the 22 PAMI allotments as an Excel or as a PDF. So when the state users come in, this is basically what their dashboard looks like. And then they cl click on view application and that takes them directly to the application. This is the plan. This is the uh, PAMI plan or application as it's called. Any questions before we move on? <clears throat> yes, Mary, uh, we do have a question on the checklist. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, once submitted, is there an option to revise the checklist if there was an error made? Okay. Yeah, let's see. If you're talking about the the review process and say the project officer goes in and does a and is completing the checklist and makes an error in their response when the first team lead goes through if they pick up that response they'll reject the they'll reject the checklist inform the project officer of the uh in, how do I say it? that this was incorrect and what happens is when the first team lead rejects the checklist it goes back to the project officer for correction so basically what happens if, if the team lead rejects it the project uh, this becomes um, editable if that's what you're asking and then the project officer can go in and make their corrections and then resubmit it to the team lead for approval. Is that what you were asking? <clears throat> I believe that was the question, Mary. Um, if you'd like to unmute and ask, this was, yes, she agrees. The Esther agrees that this was the answer. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay, okay. And that's how that works. And you'll notice, I'm glad I pulled this up. You'll notice that this is in red and that means it has to be completed before you can save uh, the record. You have to enter some information here before this table, this part of the checklist can be saved. And all of them are the same way. This is a required field. All right. Now, one final thing, and that is the documentation log, which is here at the bottom. I do want to show you the status log before I go to the documentation log. If I click on the status log, let's... The status log, if I click on the status log, the status log is there for your use. And basically what it does, it shows step-by-step -step 
anything that has been updated, has any of the tables that have been updated or touched and what was done and where it was done, the description, data saved from uh, for form, PAMI progress, statement, priorities and objectives. So if you need to, you can come in here and do a review of who have done what and which application it was done to. All right, now the documentation log. The documentation log, you can get to it two different ways. I'm going to show you from the uh, report itself. You come down, you click on documentation log, and this is where you can go in and type any notes or any information you need to keep track of for this state. You'll see that the state is automatically there, the year of the application and which application we're looking at. We're looking at the report. And you'll see here it says type of activity, any. You can come in here and you can select what this note is going to be for. What this note is going to be for. And I'm going to put, this is going to be a review note. Now, it's just these top fields that are required. I could go, I could now go in and type my note, or I can go in and I can select which table it's going to be for. If I have a contact, we have a list of contacts for that state. If you wish, you can enter that information. And you can also, if you wish, you can enter the project officer. These are not required fields, but if you wish to, you can enter that information and I'll put in today's date. Then I'll type a note. All right. Once I've typed in my note, I can go ahead and click on save. And here you'll see, here is my note. And here is the information that I typed in. If you wish, at this time, you can add an attachment. You simply click on Choose File. And upload your note. And here it is. If you need to, you can delete it at any time. Once you've done this, you simply click on the X and that closes that. And now you have your attachment. And that's how the notes work. If you want to go in and search for notes that you've put in in the past, You'll note that this screen is basically set up the same way as the add note screen. I'm going to come over here and I can select very specific what I want to look for. You'll note that they're all checked. However, if I just want to click on review notes and check all the other items, click on save. I can go in and I can add all of this information to be more specific about what I'm searching for. You can also put in specific dates of what you want the search to do. So if you want to do it for past years, you can put in specific date, date range here. And it'll use that date range to do the search. Or you can put in a specific date for that note. And then simply click on search. It will go in and it will search the database. And this may take a while. And it will pull up all the notes for that specific date. If I didn't put a date in, it would just pull up all of my review notes for the 2021 uh, report for this date. So if I put in multiple notes, it'll be in multiple listing here. But then you can go in and you can review review what they said and review the attachment if needed. Now, 
One other thing we have in the Web BGAS application is what we call change tracking. And you'll notice here it says change tracking. And this has to do, I believe for the report, the PAMI report, we have change tracking for just the uh, priorities and objectives. But if I come in here and click on change tracking and click on save, and then do a search. It will bring up All right. Oh, I apologize. My fault. I didn't remove the date. I apologize. As you'll note here, if someone has gone in and updated the priorities and objectives, those changes can be found here. As you can see, this is for goal test one. And here are the changes. The old value was zero. The new value is 150 for actual outcome. Progress to the goal changes. The value went from false to true. And then a reason was given. So anytime someone goes in and updates the priorities and objectives, that data will be documented in change tracking. So you can come in here and review any changes that were made, any additions that were made, any updates, or any um, new verbiage that has been added. So that is what the change tracking is for. You can do it to review the priorities and objectives. I also want to show, I said there's two ways you can get to the documentation log. You can get to it, as of now, you can get to it from the report or plan itself. You can also get to it from the dashboard table. You'll come down here and you'll see it says documentation log. For this one, for the one that's on the dashboard, you go in and you in enter the information, which fiscal year you want it to. So if you want it for past years, you can do so. And then do you want it for the plan or the report or a general note? You can do it as a documentation as a general note. I'm going to go in and click on General Note and click on Go. And here it is loaded, the Guam Fiscal Year 2020-2021 Documentation Log. And once again, the screen is the same. You go in, you complete this information, and you're just putting in a general note for Guam. Nothing specific. It's not for the report. It's not for the plan. It's just a general note. All right. Any questions? No questions, Mary. Okay. Michelle or Lisa, do you have anything to say? Anything I need to cover? You're all unmuted. Nope, I don't have anything. I think you did a good job. Okay. Um, hi, Mary. I just have a question for clarification. Okay. So what you just showed us was the mental health block grant on the notes, general notes, that would be the same for the PAMI program? For mental health? Okay, you just showed us mental health, but 
I thought we were looking at the PAMI program. I just want to make sure it's the same for the PAMI Wait, program. No, she did it through the PAMI app. Hold on, right, just a what came up? hold on just a sec. Okay. Let's see what happens here. What Lisa, the might have, month, right? Lisa might have picked up a faux pas. Good on you, Lisa. So let's just double check. Oh, yeah, I see. It does see block grant. Good one, Lisa. Okay. okay, no, I'll put that in. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay. I will. All right. I will keep you guys advised as to this. That, that this should have Thank said you. this should have been for Pammy. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Lisa. So, <clears throat> so with Thank the you. with the gen with the general note, uh, it doesn't the note doesn't really belong to an application, Mary um, and Lisa. Uh, so what we have is we have a general screen for the block grant application. Uh, it does not. So the note that you're going to enter here will not belong to MH, uh, SA, PAMI, PATH, anything. It's just a general note. Actually, yeah. that's a problem we identified last year. We want notes. When we pulled up general notes once before, it had all the application notes. We want to be able to just go to PAMI. Because so, we only uh, go, some people don't have access to nothing but PAMI. And that's me. I don't have access to these other uh, block grants. <laughs> Right. So do you uh, do you want general note for PAMI at all? Or do you think the notes are just going to belong to one of the applications under PAMI? We want it to be general note. We want PAMI to have general notes, but when we pull up general notes, we don't want it for all the other block grants. Okay. Just want so the general note. So the general note for PAMI. Oh, go ahead, Mary. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Charlene. <clears throat> so what I mean is uh, for the general note for PAMI, that would mean <clears throat> it belongs to a state, it belongs to a year, but no particular application under the PAMI umbrella, right? General, okay, when we make general, if we make general notes under the PAMI application or PAMI in the documentation <clears throat> under PAMI, I only have access to PAMI. I don't have access, so if I make a general note, I'm thinking it's going under the PAMI program. That's the best way I can describe it. So you want the general note to be included in what we call the wall. You want it to be blocked off and just for PAMI. Yes. Okay. So okay. that's all I have access to. I don't have access to any of the other block grants. All right. Well, we'll talk to the developers. We'll talk to the team and see what can be done. Uh, now, again, Michelle, you on the line, so I don't know what approval process we need to go through, but that's something yeah. that we uh, talked about last year. Okay, yeah, it'll have to go through me and the core, so. Right. right. So let me, talk um, to the let me talk to the team and see what we can come up with, and then we'll, Michelle, I'll get in touch with you. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Because it was a little confusing when I just saw what, I, what you originally pulled up. Okay. I understand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out, Lisa. All right, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Well, as I said, I wanna thank you all for attending. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly. You can go through Michelle. Uh, Michelle is very knowledgeable. Lisa is very knowledgeable or you can contact the help desk. Abby and Derek are our help desk team and they're both outstanding at responding to questions and helping you through the process. So with that, I hope you guys have a great day. Happy New Mary, Year. Mary, may I make a, a comment before you end? Of course. All right, so I sent out a, a meeting for all of the PAMI POs. Uh, we're gonna go back next Thursday through the checklist, but we're gonna be looking at it from a technical perspective regarding the response uh, from the um, information that was submitted by the PNAs. So we're still going through the checklist next week, but it would be from a different perspective. Thank you so much, Mary. Great You're job, welcome. Amy. You're welcome. Uh, like I said, if you need help, let us know. And on that note, we're ending the webinar. You all be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.